So in the month of July, there has just been so many new products being released. And of course, with that, a lot of these places are like, tech yes, can you check out our product? But on that case, it does frustrate me this month a little bit because there's just so many products coming out to the point where I just need to go out and have a bit of tech yes therapy. And that's a bit of hustling on the road. So while I'm in the car, I'm gonna be searching for some deals because I gotta go up to Brisbane to do something. And also on that note, I'll be seeing Les who is also up in Brisbane. He usually does me regular deals here from month to month, especially if you guys saw the last parts hunt, we visited Les, picked up a few goods, and he always hooks up for a pretty good price. But there's also one more thing I'm going to be doing, and that is going to a retailer and taking back some faulty products and seeing if they can change them over, because I've got two faulty hard drives and a faulty power supply too. And of course, if they're still under warranty, then I wanna get the brand new parts. So I'm gonna see how all that goes down. But with that aside, let's get the wheels turning and the hustling started. If you're in the market for a 9th gen Intel CPU, then today's video sponsor ASRock has you covered. With the Extreme 4, you've got a 12 phase VRM for the CPU power delivery, Purity Sound 4, and Polychrome RGB software to control from the BIOS to ensure that you get the smoothest FPS possible whilst you're gaming. Links in the description below for more information. So on the way up to Brisbane, we found a deal here for a GTX 1080. They wanted 450 Aussie dollars. I put in an offer of 400 and they said yes. So that's about 280 US dollars. And for a GTX 1080, that's a pretty good price. I'm actually very happy with that because you can put this in a sort of a higher end build now and then uh, get some good money for that. So it depends on what you couple it with. I'm thinking since I did get that Xeon, the 1270 V2, in last month's part hunt, that would make a perfect combination with this GPU for some 1440p gaming. Though, with that aside, let's go now to uh, the next place, that's Lezzers, and pick up, or we'll see what he's got, see if he's got some deals for us. So we just finished up at Les's place and the boot has three monitors, well actually four monitors because I had to take a faulty motherboard back to him and then replace that for a monitor. So that was like the trade I did. And we also had a HP system there and I haven't tried a HP system in a while and I know the second and third gens are kind of shaky, but this one's got a half decent power supply included with it so my thinking there is, is if I can extract the power supply, motherboard, CPU, RAM, and all that goodness, then I can actually try to get it working with a lower powered graphics card, and then I'd have a whole system done for really cheap. So that's looking like it'll be good if I can get it home and get it all working. So we'll do that later in the video. But from here on in, we're gonna to go to a place called Computer Alliance where I bought some PC parts from. Some of those are faulty, and we're gonna see if I can get those changed over for some brand new parts. So I just got finished up here in Computer Alliance and the service was actually really good. So I took the two hard drives in and the power supply and I didn't even need a receipt. They scanned everything in because they've all got their barcodes now and that automatically registers in their machine. It tells you what order that was attached to. And so they changed everything over on the spot. So now I've got two new hard drives and a new power supply too. And with that aside, it's time to get back to the Tech Yes studio and check out this HP, see if we can get that working. So now we're back at the studio and here is the quick one day mini hustle. Of course, they don't count, they're the warranty replacements, but three monitors, 
and also a GTX 1080 and a HP. Now, uh, Les did chuck in a 19 inch monitor for free, but he said it might be faulty and I can check it out, but I just, I put it up in the garage because I don't have time at the moment to check out a faulty monitor. But this is the challenge right here. And I think it could go well. Basically, there's two problems I'm seeing so far. Looking at this, that is the front panel power switch and also this cooler here, if it's actually mounted through the holes to the case. So we'd have to use a different cooler, but if we can get this to boot up off a, um, say for instance, my little golden tool that I use by shorting out the two pins, and we can put a graphics card in here, then it would be okay for a transplant, I believe. So we're gonna try that first and see if we've got a signal. So we've now managed to boot this PC up off a single short. So that's a good thing in that we can use a power switch off a normal case for this build. Uh, but I'm trying to get into the BIOS to see if I can get some of those options out, extract some of those options like secure boot and uh, UEFI PCIe boot. And the thing is, I can't even get in. Like it says escape for startup menu. And I'm, I, I'm hitting escape. I've tried a heap of different keyboards here and I just can't get in. So I'm guessing it might need a PS2 keyboard, but this is the weirdest thing. You press F1 and it'll, it'll work. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just classical HP crap, but with that aside, I mean, we're just gonna chuck it in a case and hope and pray that it does work. And I got a feeling it does. So it is fourth gen. So, and what I'm doing with it is I'm taking all the proprietary out and we're gonna use all that proprietary. So we're coming into a little bit of problem. This was indeed screwed down to the case and taking it out didn't really yield us any good results. And I tried doing some kind of a ghetto rigging there and it didn't work. But you can see here that the mounting system is proprietary. It's not gonna fit anything conventional. So what I need to do is I need to get some nuts for the bottom of this and try and secure this cooler onto this CPU. So I gotta see what I've got around the studio. Might not even have it. If I don't have it, then I'm gonna have to wait till the hardware store opens tomorrow in order to finish this. So we've now got this concept and it is booting, which is incredible. So this is really good news, at least for me, because we've got an 80 plus gold rated power supply down there. It supports 240 watts max. And so we're gonna be stress testing this after we install Windows. And if this does pass the stress tests, then I'm gonna show you guys all the little janky things that I did here to get this to work. Cause we're using a fan splitter up the top there then we cut out a piece right there for the CPU fan because it had a weird proprietary connector. And of course we're using a SATA connector for the RX 470 uh, SATA to PCIe uh, six pin. So <laughs> this is like crazy because the amount of money we paid of course is very little compared to what you'd pay for, I guess, OEMs like Vostros and stuff that are ready to work. 
so hopefully this all installs and then we'll come back and we'll run the benchmark for a good while and see the results. So we've now been running this for a few different benchmarks here on Heaven. It's passing absolutely fine. And now the funny thing is, I did a video recently comparing the 470 versus the 570 on the RX series. And with the 9900K, these scores are pretty much exactly the same. So in other words, this 4670S CPU coupled with this RX 470 is not presenting any bottlenecks whatsoever. So that's a really good sign. Of course, we've got the 240 watt gold rated power supply and we've got all this proprietary stuff. But let's move over now to the desk where I'm gonna talk a lot more about that because there is some drawbacks to it. And I mean, you do have to have a bit of patience to get this to work, but regardless, it is working. Breathe it in fellow tech, yes citizens, breathe it in that right there is the smell of victory. And what we had with this HP OEM fitted into this case was something that honestly, with an SSD, eight gig of RAM, 500 gigabyte backup hard drive, uh, 4670S and a RX 470, we've put this together for 270 Aussie dollars in total. So that would be about 190 USD and we've got bling to go with it. Now, some scary things with this and some things to be careful of. I couldn't actually get out a power reading with this power supply. So th this is that proprietary that the power meter that I had here read a constant 7.3 watts. So I'm guessing there's something blocking it out on the input end, which is scary because I've never seen that before. And that's able to not give us a reading at all. If I had to guesstimate the power consumption of this build, I'd put it around maybe 180 watts with the RX 470. So everything is going to be completely under control. We're still coming under that 240 watt limit with some room to breathe. And the good thing about this board is it's got a lot of USB ports at the back. Uh, everything just works really smoothly, though we do have a USB 3 connection on it that we can't get access to because the RX 470 is covering that slot. Uh, so if you do want to put in a smaller graphics card, say for instance, a GTX 1650, then that would work and you'd be able to get your USB 3 front out. And so the funny thing is about this build is that they've used proprietary connections on the power supply where you do need that power supply because it's got those different connectors that run off the motherboard, but they've also got this little white pin connector on the side that runs from the power supply. And I'm guessing that's the initiation. And so what HP decided to do was do all that proprietary stuff there, but then leave things like the onboard audio connectors, the USB ports, and even the power supply connector uh, not proprietary. And so in the case of Dell, I've tried some uh, stuff with those Dells in the past and they've got like a power switch that has three pins and it's very hard to get around that in order to boot those Dell motherboards properly. This however, doesn't have proprietary after the power supply motherboard. So it is possible and you can do it with ease. And now the good thing about this fourth gen uh, build here is that it does have those options to disable secure boot, enable uh, PCIe, uh, boot from UEFI on the fourth gen. I know in previous generations, especially second and third gen, can have a lot of headaches trying to get a uh, something like an RX 470, for example, to boot off that motherboard. And in this case, it doesn't have those options because it was fourth gen, it was newer. They probably said, okay, let's enable these motherboards to boot with modern graphics cards. And I guess they just didn't suspect that <laughs> six years down the track or whatever, there'd be this Bogan from Australia who'd be piecing together these PCs uh, with modern day graphics cards and then putting together gaming PCs. And that's the funny thing. I guess none of these guys back in those days intended for CPUs to sort of stagnate as much as they have, but GPUs to keep going. And so this hardware here now is still gold in 2019, especially at the prices you can get the whole kit for and included with a power supply. I mean, that's just fantastic value for money. And you've even got a Windows 10 Pro license activated on these boards. So the value for money is just screaming out to me at this build right now. And I'm just so happy with it though. Again, the drawbacks, we've only got a limited amount of connections from this power supply. 
I've used the two SATA connections for the hard drive and the SSD, and then I've used a SATA to a PCIe 6 pin for the RX 470, and I've also used a fan extension to four fan pin headers to power all the fans in this case. And surprisingly, that works absolutely fine. And that's running, yeah, again, four fans off of one header, which I've done in the past on different motherboards. And you'll know it doesn't work when the LEDs are starting to cut out and stuff like that. These fans are running absolutely fine. So whatever components they've put in the power supply and the motherboard, they've done it right. They've actually built this uh, motherboard and power supply up really strong. And I guess that's for the business uh, world of things, but you can then use that for gaming PCs and it's gonna be reliable. But the other hurdle we also had was that CPU cooler. It is proprietary too, so you're going to have to use that cooler with the 4670S. So the way you get around that is even just getting some nuts and going nuts and screwing those things off in the case that we've got here. And then the last thing was that CPU four pin fan connector where it did have a different bottom end. So you just have to cut out that little bracket in the uh, CPU fan and then plug it into the motherboard that way and it surprisingly works. So they didn't change around the configuration of those pin layouts for that other fan connector on the board. But the funny thing is when you do do this, your CPU fan is now pushing the air the other way, but I don't imagine it'll be a problem since we are using an RX 470 reference, which does suck air in and then blows it out the back of the case. So everything is looking amazing. This is, I guess, a new meta for you guys. If you wanna put a gaming PC together, for your friends, family, or whatever, and you just want really good value for money and one of these PCs pops up for sale, then it's worth a look. I mean, keep in mind, you will need some extensions, so I'll put some links in the description below. You'll need a SATA to PCIe converter if you wanna use a graphics card that's low power. Don't go too crazy, like don't go putting an RX 580 in this thing, because uh, I just don't think it'll work. But an RX 470 it uses a lot less power. I think it was about 89, 90 watts from when I did my test in a previous video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up here. But with all that out of the way, this is a mid-month hustle that just ended up being something completely different to what I intended it to be initially. But that's just the way things go. I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. I know some people are in the comments and this comes up all the time here on the channel. They love the used stuff, they love the hustle. And again, that's not going anywhere. I love doing this stuff for you guys. I love sharing all the secrets. I don't really care about, oh, you know, you should keep your magician should keep his secrets and not show anyone, but it doesn't matter because I'm here. And I guess I just got into YouTube to sort of show these things to people. And then in turn, a lot of people behind the scenes have shown me things that I've then shared on the channel too. So I learn new things from you guys. And then I do things like this and help people out and show them new metas. But there's also the new products, as we said in the intro, they come in full force this month and I do, and I've said this in the past, the reason I do the new parts is because it helps me to do the used parts. Obviously, new parts is gonna be a lot more money in terms of you do a review for something, if it's a good product, then you've got affiliate links and it's just more profitable than doing used parts. Uh, but of course, because my passion, I love doing all the used stuff, I then use the new stuff to fuel the used passion. And so that's something I've always been transparent about here on the channel. But also the biggest benefit of doing that is that I can then compare the new stuff versus the used stuff, which I know a lot of you guys love because the views and the likes on those videos usually go out of control. So stay tuned for that X58 comparison. It's coming early next month. Anyway guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to give us a big like and also let us know in the comment section below what you think about what we did here today with this HP machine and also what you think of that GTX 1080 deal we got. I thought that was pretty good for 400 Aussie dollars or 280 US. That's definitely gonna go into like a higher end gaming PC and you can definitely make a bit of profit doing stuff like that. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.